Welcome to the Virginia Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Officers Virtual College Fair. My name is Jasmine. I'm going to serve as the facilitator for our session today. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping announcements. The first announcement, your camera and microphone are off, so our presenters are unable to see or hear you. Second announcement. You can use the Q&A feature in Zoom to type your questions to our presenters at any point throughout our session today. Third announcement. This is just one of a few different sessions we're offering. So feel free to visit our registration site to sign up for additional sessions. And finally, this presentation is being recorded and you can access this recording by visiting strivescan.com slash Virginia. With all of that said, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to our first presenter from North Carolina State University. Thank you, Jasmine. Hi, everybody. My name is Taylor Holland with the Office of Undergraduate Admissions at NC State University. And thank you for joining all of us tonight. We're excited to be here. Let's go ahead and get it started. So everybody, welcome to NC State University. We're exactly one mile from downtown Raleigh. Uh, we're known as a work and place city, great restaurants and uh, developed by award-winning chefs, hundreds of bistros and restaurants nearby. And we're known for great um, street fairs and events of every genre, bluegrass music festival, all types of music festivals. Uh, hopscotch music festival, rock and roll music festivals, country music festivals, you name it, we've got it. Uh, also, our downtown, our downtown amphitheater is one of many amphitheaters in the area as well. And so there's a lot of concert opportunities available to you in the area. And we're also famous for a lot of different street fairs and um, such as collector car shows, antique car shows, performance car shows, boat shows, motorcycle shows, food truck shows, you name it. And outdoors, we have lots of many, we have many parks, lakes, camping, trails, something for every indoor and outdoor enthusiast uh, with recreational activities are available to you as well. And as you can see, Raleigh's been ranked number two in the nation now here recently and one of the best areas for businesses and careers and a great place for college students. Moving on, our experiential experiences. Uh, basically, um, we have a lot to offer our 34,000 students of which our average class size is 25 to 35 students. Our student to teacher ratio is 17 to one. And we offer a lot of things, no matter what major you're in. Entrepreneurship, we are ranked number 10 in the entire nation of having one of the largest entrepreneurship where you start your own companies. Uh, while you're at NC State University, in the past few years, we've had over 170 startups and spinoffs that have been created from undergraduate research, where our students are the owners of their own brand new company before they'll graduate with their degree. Co-ops and internships are available to all students of every major. Uh, you can do a summer, a semester, an entire year, all our options with this program, and you'll return to the university to finish your degree and cap off the beginnings of having an even more fantastic career opportunity and many career opportunities. Study abroad, hundreds of programs in over 60 countries around the world, add international flair and tools to your academic toolbox. Research opportunities are available as well. We are one of two public research intensive universities in the state. Our research office supports and promotes discovery, inquiry, scholarship, and creativity-based research opportunities through mentored experiences with NC State faculty and other scholars and professionals as well. Undergraduate research and scholarship, it can look different depending on what your major and discipline is, but regardless, students are gaining skills on how to create the best knowledge in their field. We offer research projects by departments, individual courses, and even undergraduate research abroad opportunities. In addition, we are located right near Research Triangle Park, which is one of the largest research tri uh, parks in the nation, right up there with Silicon Valley in California. And this is an integral, this is a very important part uh, to our students who are wanting research opportunities because being right there, it's very conducive for undergraduate research opportunities no matter what your major is. So it doesn't have to be STEM, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, it can be a number of the other great unique majors that we offer uh, to our students as well. So lots of opportunity available to you. These were our most popular majors that were applied for in fall of 2021, but we have over hundred majors and 130 minors for you to choose from. But every year it can you know, differ a little bit depending on what, you know, you know, how many, how many apps went into each department, but it covers a wide range of the nine different colleges here at NC State University. And again, this is just, you know, this is not what you would call, um, 
you know, the exhaustive list of all of our majors, as again, all of them are very popular, but we do offer different, the different majors and different minors to accommodate many students from all over the world as well. And so the opportunities are there. And we hope this kind of gives you an idea of, you know, the opportunities when it comes to the different choices of fields that you can study as well, also, you know, within NC State University. And double majors and minors are highly, highly um, sought after as well. What we look for in our candidates Basically, these, you should have at least 30 transferable college credit hours, including specific coursework and a competitive GPA based on the major you're applying for. Meeting the strong recommendations does not necessarily guarantee you admissions, but it does set you up to be considered competitive. Your transferable GPA, we recalculate overall GPA based on all transferable types of courses that you've attempted. And um, there's not a maximum amount of hours that you can transfer in, but be careful. You have to do the last 25% of the degree in residence. Uh, in order to graduate from NC State University and the last 48 hours of the 60 credit hour layout for the College of Engineering. Courses repeated at the other, any other institutions will be calculated originally with, with the original grade. We will drop the two lowest grades below a C minus in your overall college career as well. So we try to give you some help there with that as well. Your major specific coursework, again, the most competitive students will have those 30 transferable hours and uh, the correct strongly highly recommended courses listed on our website prior to submitting an application and they have final grades. If you are working on those courses and they're in progress, you'll still be considered, but those who've exceeded the strongly recommended courses might have a little bit of a stronger competitive edge over you as well. Your accomplishments and involvement outside of the classroom because of the heavy emphasis on academic preparation, enrichment activities should complement the major you're applying for. If you have that chance, not everybody does. But if you do, fantastic. Enrichment activities or anything you do outside of the classroom, it could be jobs, military experience, clubs, community work, honor societies, anything along that line. You're interested in the program you're applying for, that recommended coursework that you'll find on our website and a competitive GPA, uh, highly recommend it. You'll apply into the major of interest. We do not offer general admissions, unfortunately. I wish we did, but we don't have it. So you apply, if you're admitted to the major, you're admitted to the university. And we look for those recommended courses, related courses and activity work experience, if you have that chance um, to be involved in during the application process. There is an academic interest essay that will be required on the application and tell us why you're interested in that major. We do have recommendations for the competitive applicants. Take a picture of this, the admissions.ncsu.edu forward slash transfer. Uh, that'll take you to everything I've talked about and what is required for each of the majors, each of the colleges you know, that control all of the majors. We have our baccalaureate degree plans for those of you who might have some North Carolina Community College um, credits. If not, we work with a lot of um, Virginia community colleges and students from other Virginia, you know, from all over the country, from other community colleges all over the country. So, and we have a huge tra transfer credit database in there for you with over 3,400 colleges worth of credits in there as well, what we know so far based on receiving transcripts. And with that, um, dates and deadlines for fall entry, our application opens up every August 1st for the next calendar school year. So for the spring, uh, you wanna apply sometime between really December and February 15th. And we begin rolling out the decisions on April 15th, spring entry. Application deadline is October 1st. Um, uh, I'm sorry, October 1st for the spring entry. And then we roll the, the application deadlines out on November 15th. Fall entry, definitely apply before February 1st. 15th to um, get to the April 15th rollout. And you have up to May 1st to confirm your enrollment, or you get 10 extra days if you find out on May 1st, 10 business days to let us know whether or not. So definitely take a picture of this. And our main website is admissions.ncsu.edu um, forward slash transfer. And if you have any other questions or concerns, please feel free to get in touch with us by phone, or by email. We'll be glad to help you out. And that concludes my session. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Our next presenter is from Mary Baldwin University. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Mary Gilbert. I'm the Transfer Admissions Counselor at Mary Baldwin University. We're located in Stanton, Virginia, which is about two and a half hours south of Washington, DC, and we're about an hour away from the West Virginia border. Firstly, I wanna start off with what's really important to us here at NBU, and that's our students. Our goal is to help you find your fit and what works for you. Michaela's a student who found hers here, and this is what she had to say about us. 
I dealt with a lot of insecurity in middle and in high school, and I was content to hide in the background of every class. Coming to MBU, to where some of my classes only had about 12 people, that meant that I was given the chance to speak up and feel comfortable sharing my thoughts among a class filled with my peers. If you are looking for a school that will make you as an individual feel special, then MBU is the place for you. Mary Baldwin is located one block away from downtown Stanton, which was voted one of the top 20 best small towns in America. Stanton's Main Street also has named one of the best in the US to visit. MBU is one of the most ethnically diverse campuses with 58% students of color and student representation from 39 states and six different countries. Here at MBU, you come first. We have wonderful academic opportunities from the moment you step foot on campus. Students are able to complete internships as soon as they walk through the doors here at MBU and your senior year, they all complete a senior capstone project. We have many leadership opportunities on campus available to all students and over 50 different clubs and organizations, as well as Division III athletics. Here at MBU, we offer over 50 different majors and minors, as well as 11 graduate degree programs. We have roughly 1,000 undergraduate students and an average class size of about 17. With an 11 to 1 faculty, student to faculty ratio, class sizes are expected to be small, and you'd be given the opportunity to connect with your professors and your students on a more engaging level. Our goal is to make sure you're a great fit for the university, all while finding your calling while you're here. In 1842, Mary Baldwin University proudly started off as a women's college to teach women to strive forward in life. And to keep these enriching programs alive, we are proud to offer a few distinctive programs for women here at MBU. Our College for Women is a unique program available exclusively to young women at Mary Baldwin. This program is a women-centered program that helps build student strengths and develop leadership skills. Another great opportunity we have at MBU is our VWO program. VWO stands for Virginia Women's Institute for Leadership and it's the nation's only all female cadet corps in the country. This program builds leadership skills as well as prepares students to enter into the military upon graduation as an officer if they choose to serve. Additionally, MBU offers a unique leadership program specifically designed for African-American women. IDB Wells is a community for women of African descent who want to explore culture, identity, leadership, and civic engagement as the foundation for their active participation in the college community. Our applications are open and you're available to apply through our website directly as a transfer student. It is free to apply to MBU and we operate under rolling admissions. Once we receive your application and transcripts, you can expect to hear an admissions decision within two weeks time. When applying, we require students to submit an unofficial transcript with a minimum GPA of at least a 2.0 in order to be admitted. If you have less than 24 credits, we will need your high school transcripts as well. And we accept up to 84 credit hours when transferring in. We also have a partnership with the local VCCS community college system. And I work directly with your academic advisor to determine how your credits transfer in based on your intended area of study. Our goal here at Mary Bolden is to provide you an affordable education. All students who are accepted and attend MBU in seat receive merit scholarships based on their GPA. This year, our merit scholarships range from $16,000 to $22,000, and you'll get this amount every year you attend Mary Baldwin. 95% of our students receive some form of financial aid and scholarships, and students can start expecting financial aid packages within two weeks of submitting their FAFSA. Thank you all so much for listening. And if you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to reach out or shoot me a message on the chat and I'll be happy to answer those questions for you. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Our next presenter is from Randolph College. Hi, my name is Joy McGrath. 
and I am the Associate Director of Admissions at Randolph College. All right, we are located in Lynchburg, Virginia, which is about two hours west of Richmond and three hours south of Washington, DC. Our location is in the historic district of Lynchburg. So this beautiful picturesque campus, um, less than a five minute walk from one end of the campus to the next. It's about 100 acres um, and two miles from downtown, so a great location. We are a small college and we pride ourselves on being small. We've got 600 students and uh, this is where you cannot hide. So um, this is something that our students are constantly engaging with our faculty members and um, striving to always do and challenge themselves more and more each day. This is a list of our majors, uh, but we do have probably um, close to 30 majors. Some of our more popular majors are in the sciences, um, the hard sciences, as well as uh, psychology. Um, one of our most recent majors is the sport and exercise studies program. Um, History is also very popular with our students. We do have a couple of graduate programs, our MFA, MAT, and then the Masters of Arts in Coaching and Sport Leadership. Our professors decided a couple of years ago that they wanted to think about the best way that our students learn and they did not think the typical four to six classes a semester was the solution. So this past August we started our take two academic model where you take two classes for seven weeks, you take a week off and then you take two more classes for seven weeks. It's this intensive learning that our students have thrived in. Um, we are excited about it. Um, it makes them be able to focus more on their classes. Wednesdays, there are no classes. That is for our athletics or our fine arts, um, internships, community service, catching up on homework. So um, we are, have been super excited about this. And I must say, this is probably this last semester, one of the largest dean's lists that we've had here. So we feel like this has been a huge success for us. A couple of different ways that we are going to support your success here at Randolph. We have a couple of transition programs that are eligible for our transfer students, including our STEM honors program called Super um, Academic Services, where you are able to have free peer tutoring in any of our classes. You can even be a tutor. Um, our Career Development Center that's going to help you with your resume, with internships, to be able to have you be successful for what comes after college. And then of course advising, and this is a huge advantage of our small school, is being able to have this one-on-one -on -one attention. These professors are going to know your name. They will probably even invite you over to their homes. Um, you see this clearly all the time. We are a member of the Old Dominion Athletic Conference, one of the most competitive Division Three conferences in the U.S., um, multiple different teams, and uh, we did add, just add eSports as our most recent. Maybe you also want to be an artist, whether it's in our theater department or our dance studio. Um, in our art studios, um, we have vocal, we have instrumental options available. We even have a Mayor Museum of Art on campus that has one of the oldest American art collections around, so it's absolutely stunning. And then being involved, wherever you end up going, I can't stress this enough about maybe trying something new. Um, we have an involvement fair the first week of classes where the uh, student organizations and clubs will come out, set up on Bell Quad, get students really involved involved in what is available for them to have fun while they're at Randolph. Traditions are huge here. We were founded in 1891 as Randolph Macon Woman's College and went co-ed in 2007. And a lot of the traditions have continued. One of the biggest ones is the odds versus the evens. And this is based on when you graduate from college. So you could be part of the odd class or the even class. So huge rivalry there. We have this huge red brick wall that surrounds the college. And so you'll often hear the term life outside of the red brick wall. So what do we offer? We're two miles from downtown. So it's convenient. You can take one of the bikes, ride downtown. Um, there's also 
huge social event for the um, surrounding colleges downtown each year. We have study abroad opportunities that's available. We've got a, agreements with, um, I believe it's Japan, Spain, uh, Northern Ireland, um, and I believe France. So those are different options that are available. Internships and research. We have summer research that's available to students working one on one with faculty members. We also have RISE grants. It's up to $2,000 and that can be in any experiential learning. Uh, maybe a student that is doing a senior project on a statue in Spain gets this paid for and um, is allowed to, to have housing, the airfare, everything is paid for. So submit your application. It's an easy process. It's free. We participate with the Common App. Send us your transcript. We do require your high school transcript if you have 30 credit hours or less. Um, we will evaluate those. Most students with about a 2.3 or higher will be accepted. Complete your FAFSA. Talk to me. I work with transfer students. Um, come visit wherever you end up. I can't stress that enough and then make your deposit. Take a picture of this. This is my contact details. That's my cell number. I will reply. It's the beauty of small school. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joy. Our next presenter is from East Carolina University. All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, we're going to dive a little bit into East Carolina. So a lot of people don't know that East Carolina is the third largest of the 17 University of North Carolina schools in the state of North Carolina. We come in just below 29,000 students totally enrolled, but we do maintain a 19 to 1 student faculty ratio with an average class size of 28. Of our total enrollment, 90% come from in-state and 10% come from out-of-state. Because we're a large school, we have over 500 student clubs and organizations for you to choose from for just about any interest you may have. That's gonna include 15 campus ministries and 38 Greek organizations. For residence life, we have 15 different residence halls and over 31 dining locations across campus. That includes two dining halls, six convenience markets and 23 national names like Chick-fil-A, Starbucks and Chili's. And we actually have the only Raising Cane's in the state on our campus, which is pretty cool. For academics, we do offer one of the wider um, range of degree programs in the state of North Carolina. So we can offer 87 bachelor's degrees, 70 master's programs and 18 doctoral programs with a lot of different graduate certificates and other um, sort of programs and licensures mixed in as well. For top undergraduate programs, to give you guys an idea, um, nursing by far is our most popular program. We actually do graduate the most nurses and teachers within the state of North Carolina, but right behind that is management, marketing, psychology, and elementary education, which is quite a wide range of programs there at the top. And then we are the only school in the state that has a dental school, medical school, and a college of engineering at the same institution. For location, if you're un, um, unfamiliar with ECU, we are in Greenville. Um, so our main campus, our athletics facilities, our health sciences and our West Research Campus are all in Greenville. But a lot of people don't know that we do have a small satellite campus right outside Manio, North Carolina, there in the Outer Banks. It's about two hours from Greenville and it houses our integrated coastal studies program specifically. For athletics, which is what a lot of students will recognize us for, we have 18 different NCAA Division I sports. Um, probably the most, most popular is definitely gonna be football and that's Dowdy Ficklin Stadium there in the right-hand corner. We participate in the American Athletic Conference and students get free tickets for regular season home games. In addition to the 18 different NCAA Division I sports, we have 30 different club and intramural sports available to students who want to um, participate in those on campus. Our online application um, for you guys to um, know how to apply, it is still open for our transfer students. It will be open until about uh, the middle of July. You'll need to submit your online application. There is a $75 application fee. We do offer fee waivers to, to transfer students, but you do have to email our transfer email over there to the right to go through that process. We'll need your college transcripts um, from every single college you've ever attended, and we'll need high school transcripts, um, but we'll only need those if you have 
have less than 24 credit hours. If you're over 24 credit hours, the college transcript will suffice. Um, this is more for freshmen, um, but we did go test blind for 2022 and so did our honors college. But um, in 2023, we will be requiring test scores. To give you guys a little bit of an idea of our application deadlines, again, this is gonna be for this year. So if you're not looking to transfer, these do vary, but they tend to hover around the same times. Our application opens on August 1st. Our spring deadline is December 6th. Our summer deadline is April 25th and our fall deadline is July 1st. So again, if you're looking to join us this fall, you'd still have plenty of time to submit your application and your documents. To stay connected with ECU because that's gonna be really important is you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter and like us on Facebook at ECU Admissions. Again, this is our transfer email. So if you have any questions about the transfer process or you wanna connect with your counselor, you can email transfer at ecu.edu. We also offer in-person and virtual tours, live in info sessions, and student panels all at our visit site on our webpage. Um, we also have um, information sessions there um, that you can take part in. And then please, please come see us here in Greenville. Um, we're starting to get our nice sunny weather back. And this is my information. If you want to snap a pic of it, I am Allie Hortonberry. I am the regional admissions counselor for students in Virginia, DC, and Maryland. I'm actually located in Richmond, not Greenville. So I'm a little bit closer to you guys um, and here to help. So that's my phone number, my text number, and my email um, on our admissions webpage. We also have a meet the staff site. So you can find me on there and book a virtual appointment or an in-person appointment if you do wish to do that. So thank you so much again for joining us and please shoot any questions my way. Go Pirates! Thank you, Allie. Our next presenter is from the University of Sterling. There we go. Hi guys, thanks so much for giving a bit of your time to come hang out for a little bit. My name is Jason Vi. I'm the International Recruitment Manager with the University of Stirling based in Stirling, Scotland. Um, if you can't tell, I hate to burst everybody's bubble. I am not Scottish. Uh, this accent is all Baltimore. However, I'm a student from the US, started in the US system. The US system wasn't the best system for me, so I ended up transferring over to the UK. And there's a couple of distinct advantages that you get from studying in the UK, as well as being a student coming from the North American education system, studying in Europe. So hopefully I can touch base on that. Um, housekeeping notes. It is 10.30 at night, so my brain is kind of shut off, so bear with me. We're going to get through it together. Um, but there is a QR code at the bottom of every single screen. So if something catches your fancy or if I don't explain something well enough, scan the code, pop your details in. I'm not going to spam you, and that way we can just have a chat once, once this presentation is over. So we're going to hop on BA215 flight from Dulles over to the UK to Edinburgh, and oh my goodness, we are already there. So if you've not been lucky enough to come to Scotland before, it is a wonderful country. Scotland and Ireland always fight for friendliest country in the world, so you can expect a warm welcome when you get here. If you have been to Scotland, I would suspect that you might have gone to Edinburgh, it's the capital, or possibly Glasgow, it's the largest city. Stirling is right in between them, nestled in the foothills of the Scottish Highlands. So the city of Stirling used to be the Scottish capital, known as the gateway to the Highlands, because the English couldn't take control of all of the Highland clans without taking Stirling first. So Stirling is right in between Glasgow and Edinburgh, about 35 minutes on the train, um, eight pounds to get there. So you have two mega cities at your doorstep while living in the foothills of the Scottish mountains. So a little bit of a best of both worlds, about an hour flight down to London. If you wanna pop over to the continent for a long weekend, pop over to Belfast, a um, little bit longer to get to the continent, but even shorter, about a 45 minute flight to get to Belfast if you wanna go to um, the island of Ireland. A couple quick facts about Sterling. We are top 30 in the UK, so you have a fabulous academic reputation to help support you when you're looking at grad schools or the job market, either in Europe or transferring back to the US. We were the Sports University, uh, Sports University of the Year for 2020, so if anybody is an NCAA athlete or is possibly timing out of their NCAA time and status, you can certainly carry on playing your sport over at Sterling. We have very elite athlete, um, athlete facilities and teams to help support you pursue that sport. And then we're a modest sized university. So about 14,000 students, most of which is undergrad. So you're gonna be in good company. 120, 120 nationalities are represented on campus. We have about 
600 US students on campus at any one time. So there's enough of you to get a taste of home while you're in Scotland, but not enough to make you, to force you into a US bubble while you're in Europe. A bird's eye view of campus, um, it looks like a very US style campus. We are Scotland's youngest university founded in 1967. So a bit of a US style feel. If you are a fan of Outlander, you've seen campus and not really noticed that you were looking at it when they're supposed to be at Harvard. They're not at Harvard. <laughs> um, and in season oh, two or three, when Brianna is going to visit universities in Scotland and students are discussing and protesting Scottish independence, very relevant for the modern day world, that was actually shot in the Pathfoot building, which is the building that's in the lower left hand column. There is Air 3 Lock, which is the center of campus, everything is around campus. So there's a campus doctor, a campus pharmacy, you see the gym, which is a 20 million pound investment. So we have our elite athletes trained there as well as Olympic teams. Andy Murray's mom lives just down the road. So Andy Murray actually trains on campus and students have non-elite competition students have access to these facilities as well. Um, as far as undergraduate degree offerings, a little bit of everything, kind of what you would expect from a US university. The main difference between US expectations and UK expectations is that there are no general education requirements. So if you are an arts and humanities student, you will never take a math class ever again. If you are a math and science student, you will never have to be forced to take an English class ever again. <laughs> so hopefully that's a perk for anybody who knows what they want to study. The US system is loosely based on the Scottish. So it's still a four year undergrad degree structure in Scotland. There are no gen eds. Um, so you will have to apply directly to a major. However, in your second year, you can change your mind. So you still have the flexibility that you would expect from a US school or if you already know what you want, you can dive right in without any gen eds to have to worry about. The transfer process is a little bit different from what you might expect from a US university. So we're looking for a 3.0 unweighted GPA, so pretty standard. Um, to transfer, we're going to ask for all of your syllabi and class outlines to our admissions team when you send in your application. Um, our faculty will look at your syllabus to make sure that you are studying at the same caliber as what we would expect an incoming student. So all students are eligible for entry into the first year. So essentially starting your college degree over at Sterling. So certainly welcome all students to do that. If you are looking for entry into year two, we are looking for you to have a full year degree of college under your belt at least. And if you are given entry into year two, we have to see that you've taken all of the required year one courses that you would have had had you started studying at Sterling, which is why we ask for all your syllabi for your classes, all your academic outlines. The same for year three. If you're looking to transfer into year three, we need to see that you've taken year one and year two required courses for the degree that you're applying on. Applying for each application is reviewed on a case by case basis. The deadline to apply is the 30th of June. So you have plenty of time to kind of weigh up your options. Um, but we are, we do rolling admissions. So the longer you wait, the longer you run the risk of that degree being filled up for September start. When you send in your application, there's a couple different methods that you can use. There's the Common App. So if you're familiar with the Common App, certainly send in your application through there. UCAS is the UK's version of Common App. Um, so you can certainly use UCAS. We just ask that you not use both. You can certainly apply directly to Sterling and just make sure that you please get in contact with me. That way we can make sure that your application is flagged as a transfer application. For scholarships, we do offer scholarships for students with above a 3.0, you are automatically considered for a 2000 pound tuition fee discount. And that is renewable for all four years, even if you are a transfer student. Also to note, we are registered with FAFSA. So your FAFSA and student loans will transfer over just like they do with a US university. So that's pretty standard. Um, and then for tuition, we are typically much cheaper than if you're looking at going out of state. So in-state tuition can sometimes give us a run for our money, but I'm from Maryland. So um, going abroad uh, actually ended up being a lot cheaper than staying in-state in Maryland. So if you're doing arts and humanities courses, just over 21,000 US dollars for tuition for the year, science-based courses, $25,000. Um, and then if anybody wants to get in touch, please scan the QR code and um, hopefully we can have a chat a little bit later. Thanks, guys. Hope to see you soon. Bye. Thank you, Jason. Our next presenter is from UNC Charlotte.
All right, awesome. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Lauren Grimes. I am one of the assistant directors in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions at UNC Charlotte. Excited to share a little bit of information about who we are as an institution. Um, to get started, we are located in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, we are um, about nine miles from the city of Charlotte, or um, what you may hear it referred to as Uptown Charlotte, um, but we're only a light rail, away, a light rail ride away. Uh, we have a light rail on our campus, um, our light rail stop uh, that runs, um, it's kind of like an above ground subway system running from South Charlotte into Uptown Charlotte and then onto our campus. It's free for students to use. All they have to do is swipe their student ID. Um, so that's a pretty cool, um, uh, resource for our students to get to use on campus um, and uh, allows us to be connected physically to the city. Um, it, about Charlotte, we are uh, the largest transfer institution in the UNC system. So we are um, good friends with uh, several other schools within the UNC system. Um, but what makes Charlotte unique um, is our um, classification as the urban research university, um, but also being that largest transfer institution, very transfer friendly. We love our transfer students at Charlotte. Um, about 50% um, of our undergraduate students are transfer students enrolling about 4,000 transfer students each year. Um, so we'll talk through some of the transfer student specific resources that we have available um, within the admission side um, and, and the resources on campus for those students. Overall, UNC Charlotte is home to just over 30,000 students, crossed over that 30,000 mark um, last fall, so uh, that's been very exciting for, for our institution. Uh, we have a lot to offer. Um, what, what students will find is that um, the transfer students get to engage in classes and student orgs and extracurricular activities with other transfer students who have navigated that process. So you're not going to be alone at Charlotte. Um, we have over 400 student organizations, something for everyone to get involved in. Um, we are a member of Conference USA, transitioning into the American Athletic Conference. Um, with those 18 Division I athletic teams, we have study abroad opportunities. If that's something that you wanna do in terms of traveling the world while pursuing your education, know that you can do that at Charlotte. Um, we have uh, several uh, academic programs to choose from, um, uh, just over 170 uh, housed within seven different academic colleges. So whether you're interested in engineering, computer science, business, architecture, UNC, Charlotte's got, got it to offer. Um, with our, um, while we are a large public university, our average class size um, is about 35 students, about 85, 80 or so percent of our classes on campus do have fewer than 50 students. Um, and that's really, you know, as you progress through your degree specific coursework, you're going to find those average class sizes to be true. Um, transfer students coming in with credit, you're going to have less of those gen, gen eds and larger classes. Um, we're able to offer this with our student to faculty ratio being 20 to 1. A little bit about the um, application process at Charlotte. So we do admit year round for our transfer students. So the application opens on August 1st uh, for the following year. Um, and so right now we have an application open for summer one, summer two and fall 2022 terms. Um, and application process is pretty straightforward. It's an online application. Um, you can apply through our future 49er portal. We have, um, you're also going to be required to submit your official high school transcript, um, as well as an official transcript from every college attended. Um, a lot of a lot of the times we get questions asked about if I have to submit my high school transcript, if I have a certain number of credit hours or earn an associate's degree. Um, at this point, we are requiring that high school transcript for all of our transfer students. Um, we also have that application fee of $75 um, and once all of those uh, materials are received, we then move forward with the review process. Um, a transfer student can expect their admissions decision within about six to eight weeks of submitting all of those required items. So we do review on a rolling basis. Um, and the earlier that you get all of your materials into us, the earlier we will be able to get that decision out to you. 
What's required for transfer admission? Uh, 24 transferable credit hours and a minimum 2.0 cumulative GPA. Um, you want to be in good standing with the last uh, institution that you were enrolled in. So um, make sure that you are eligible to return there. Um, and then we encourage you to have a college level um, math complete upon transferring, um, especially for those students within STEM majors. Um, you're going to find that it's just going to help you in terms of that math sequence and moving forward with additional coursework if you're transferring with a math. Um, at Charlotte, we have competitive majors, business, nursing, computer science, and engineering. Um, so there are additional requirements for admission above and beyond the 2.0 in 24 hours. If you're interested in any of those um, programs, certainly reach out to our office for more information on those specific requirements. Um, if you're interested in living on campus, we've got a lot to offer. We have 18 different residence halls on our campus with um, suite style, dorm style, and apartment style housing. So know that if you wanted to live on campus in a suite or an apartment, um, you can do so. It's not required, but certainly encouraged. Um, we have transfer student specific communities as well, um, if that's something that you're in. And then we have a Niner choice. So for students looking to be off campus, um, know that you can do that too. Um, we have, let's see, um, so financial aid and scholarships, you'll want to make sure that you're completing your FAFSA um, and adding UNC Charlotte to your FAFSA. You can see our school code and information online um, about that. We have our Niner Scholars Portal. So if you um, are, um, who doesn't want a scholarship, right? Uh, we encourage you to apply for those scholarship opportunities upon receiving an offer of admission. I invite you to meet our transfer team. You don't see my picture there I'm, while I'm one of the counselors. Um, I'm happy to, to, to answer your questions and, and tell you more about Charlotte, but we do have specific people on our team dedicated to our transfer students every day. And then lastly, you can scan the code on the screen uh, to register to learn more about what's happening at Charlotte uh, this spring, how to visit um, and how to stay uh, connected and plugged in with us. Thank you guys so much for attending tonight. Thank you, Lauren. So this concludes our presentation for today, but I do have a few closing announcements. As you exit from the Zoom session, a survey will appear. It's approximately five questions or so, but please, please complete the survey. It's extremely helpful as we aim to improve our virtual college fair offerings in the future. I also want to remind you that you can sign up for additional sessions by visiting our registration site. And finally, you can access this recording by visiting shrivesman.com slash Virginia. I want to thank our amazing presenters for joining me, but also thank you to all of our attendees. I hope everyone has a great evening. Thank you.